Okay, today we are starting a new unit, Unit 5, which is called Graphs, Charts and Tables. It's a small unit, we only have three paragraphs here. It's quite um, basic, I would say, quite easy to understand this unit compared with previous units we've seen. Um, so let's get jump straight on it. First paragraph here will be statistical graphs. So let's start with uh, the theory behind this, a little bit of theory. One thing we're going to be talking about is categorical data. So this is basically data which you can sort out into categories. Um, let's say you've got a uh, color of, of eyes. Let's say you've got um, how, um, let's see, what else? Types of food, types of music, you know, things like that, which don't have a value, don't have a number as a value. They are different categories or types. We call this categorical data. Whereas numerical data is data which can take numbers. Now, this kind of data, numerical data, you can split into discrete and continuous. Um, so what do we mean by discrete and continuous? For example, discrete. Discrete, I would say most data we get in everyday life is discrete. Um, it's, it's sort of, imagine you can, like, like pebbles at the beach. So if you go to the beach, you will find that you can count the little stones, the little pebbles. But you cannot count the grains of sand. So continuous would be something like the grains of sand, because you can't really go and really separate um, the sand itself. So you would probably have to put in bags and say you got one kilo, three kilos, etc. You can't really count it. So um, basically, if I use this very easy uh, picture image to get you to to remember this, continuous is something which you can't really count as one, two, three, four, that sort of thing. Whereas the other one up there, you can count like one, two, three, four, etc. So this is the sort of thing discrete means, whereas continuous means something like time, length, um, temperature, weight, temperature, weight, height. Now, what is special about these things I'm mentioning down here? The special thing is this. These things, these uh, words and variables I've introduced here, they take values from a from um, take values from um, what should we call it from between certain values so for example imagine you've got a phone call so imagine you've got a phone call and you want to count the time right time of phone call and now when you look at the watch you you count the the time of how long did I talk how long did I speak for well this could be between zero minutes and let's say, for example, 10 minutes. Okay, so now, what was the time you did? Was it, for example, three seconds? Well, it wasn't exactly three seconds, was it? It was three point something. And that something, you can't really tell exactly, so you will round it. You'll say roughly three seconds. But it could have been as well, something like five point two minutes or something like that but it's not exactly 5.2 minutes 5.2 and then some decimals so you can't really separate it as such you will have to come up with your own way to separate it here this could be any value between 0 and 10 whereas if i go up to the discrete one and do the same thing well let's say for example you talk about number of um of students in a classroom then let's say we can go up to a maximum of 25 students then i could have zero one, two, three, four, etc. So here we've got distinct, distinct values. So that's basically uh, the approach. I know it's going to be a little bit tricky in the beginning just to, to remember this. But anyway, this is an introductory idea. When we talk about numerical data, it can be discrete, like things you can separate, and continuous, which means could take any value between certain values. We don't know what sort of value, but you've got like all of these all of these values in there and they're not uh, the sort of thing you can count the first one, second one, third one, that sort of thing. You, know, you can take any value in here. Anyway, moving on to finally the statistical graphs we will see here. So starting with a bar chart. Okay, so the bar chart, you've got two forms here. We're going to have a vertical bar chart and we're going to have a horizontal bar chart. So for example, if you have something like this here, you've got your mode of transport and your number of teachers. For example, number of teachers taking a car, bicycle, 
bus or walk to school, then how would we represent this using a bar chart? Well, we would draw uh, our X and Y axis here. And then notice how on the, on the Y axis, we have the thing we call frequency. We will always be doing it this way. Frequency means we count the number of number of things. So here, the number of teachers specifically, this shows us the frequency, how many choose to do one thing or the other thing. And now we see 15 teachers uh, go to school by car. So we want a bar which goes up, up to the number 15. And underneath, we're going to label this uh, using the word car. And then the next option is bicycle. So bicycle needs to go up to three here on the y-axis. So we will label this here on the x-axis using the word bicycle. Then for bus, it goes up to seven. So this bar needs to go up to seven. And then for walk, it needs to go up to five. Notice how here we've got distances between the bars. So we don't want to keep them uh, glued to each other. We want some space between them. And then the other thing we want to do is label the y-axis. And one more thing, the 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 textbook hasn't done here, is put the title up here, mode of transport to school. Um, usually we'll just put that next to the axis, so mode of transport. Normally we label the two axes separately, so we put the title for the axis here and we put the title for the other axis here on the left. And then they will ask you a question like, what percentage of teachers use the bus uh, on that day? Well, bus means this number here. What is the number that corresponds with bus? That's seven. What is the total number of teachers here? 15 plus three plus seven plus five is 30. So the percentage here would be seven over 30. And if we put this into the calculator and multiply by 100, we get roughly 23.3%. So you see the first question was really the bar chart, which is quite an easy thing to do. The second question though, was a question related to the bar chart or this table up here. So keep this in mind, we might get asked various questions here. Now let's move on to a pie chart. A pie chart is basically, it looks like a pie and often a pie is circular, that's why we call this a pie chart. Um, it represents, it presents your data in this form and this is a nice and visual approach because a lot of people can understand a lot of things very quickly. So for example, looking at just this pie chart, you know, oh right, so what are the largest uh, proportions here? Green and pink are the most common ones and then we've got the other three colors which are smaller so it gives you an intuitive approach straight away what is more what is less that sort of thing now what do we know about a pie chart we know that a circle well the the entire circle gives um, the angles are up to 360 degrees so we know the whole thing needs to be 360 degrees all of this together so this should be 360 degrees um, in fact I'm gonna put it in that center just to to indicate that so the whole thing should be 360 degrees so what does that mean how do we work out the individual degrees well let me just scroll down a bit so this is following up from the example uh, in one so in example one let me just scroll up a bit in example one, we had these numbers. We had car, bicycle, bus, and walk. We had these numbers, 15, three, seven, and five. So you'll see these numbers here, 15, um, seven, five, and three. These are the numbers from the table before. That's how we took them. And we know that the total number was 30. So what do we do here? We do basically the frequency of each thing divided by the total and then we multiply this by 360 degrees so in the first case what we've done is we've taken the number of cars we had which is 15 and we divide it by 30 which is the total and then we multiply this by 360 degrees this result which is 180 degrees tells us what part of the pie chart this represents so car represents half of a pie chart 180 degrees so you see 15 over 30 you could think of it another way what part of 30 is 15 or well, 15 over 30 is a half so half of 360 will be half of your pie chart so whichever way you prefer but i would say please uh, feel free to use a calculator here and just use this formula whenever you want to create a pie chart just take the thing you've been given divide by the total and then do times 360 degrees. So that's how we find car. Car is 180 degrees. And then moving on to bicycle, three over 30. We had three teachers taking a bicycle out of 30 teachers. So you do three over 30 times 360 degrees. That gave us 
36. If you put this into the calculator, that's what you get. So we know the slice for bicycle will have an angle which is 36 degrees right here. So that's 36 degrees. And then we do bus, bus, seven teachers took a bus from the previous example out of 30 teachers. So if you multiply that by 360 degrees, the calculator gives you 84 degrees. So bus represents um, 84 degrees, should be represented using 84 degrees here on the, on the pie chart. And now for the last one, if you wanted to, what you could do is add these three angles and take away from 360. Or you could just do the same thing as we did for the rest and say, well, five teachers were walking to school in the previous example. So we'll do five teachers divided by the total number of teachers, which is 30, over times the 360 degrees, which is the whole uh, thing. And what part does that represent? Well, that's equal to 60 degrees. So that means this last angle which was missing is going to be 60 degrees so for walking and then we'll just put it all together draw that pie chart it doesn't have to be super accurate it doesn't have to be like exact you can just label the, the each slice it's part of the circle if you like and you just make sure you put the labels in there so you label it you put car in the corresponding segment and then you put bicycle here you put uh, bus down here and you put walk here Okay, so that's the idea, and that's how you construct a pie chart. So you want to label, and you want to uh, write down the angles. Two things that you want to do to get this right. Okay, moving on to scatter diagrams and line graphs. I know there's, there's um, I've already introduced a couple of things. It's not going to take much longer. I'm just going to show you a few things and then it's going to be more practice, okay, from now on. I don't want to talk too, too much more. Okay, but hang in there, guys. Scatter diagrams and line graphs. For a scatter diagram, what do we need to do? They'll give us something like a table down here, the table for time and temperature. So if they give you something like this and say, draw a line graph to, to illustrate this data. Well, how do we do that? Let me just scroll further down. Well, the first thing you want to do is do a scatter diagram. So scatter diagram, what does that mean? It means that we want to create, we want to draw an, uh, a coordinate grid like Y here and X axis here. And we want to plot these points. So we want to take each of these points, this one, this one, this one, etc. And you want to put these points on your grid. So if you take these points and it's always going to be like this, this is going to be your X axis and this is going to be your Y axis. So where do we put these points? Well, basically uh, where we will put them is here. So I'll, I'll actually show that in the, in the big, big lab. Each of these points, so for example, the first point has coordinates 8, 5. Th this means eight o'clock. I mean, it's not, it's not a great uh, way to write it down, I suppose. Let's say I'm going to rewrite this as 0, 8, and then the second coordinate is 5. Or if you like, you can just simplify that as 8, 5. And this is your x-axis and your y-axis. So where would you put that in a graph? Let's go down 8 o'clock and on the y-axis 5 o'clock. So that's how we plot the first point. Then the second point, its x-coordinate is 9, 9, 9 o'clock on the x-axis. And the y coordinate is 8. So the second point will be at 09, 0, 0, and then 8 on the y axis. We'll just carry on with these points at point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And here, notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 points. So after we plot these points, in this coordinate grid, which what do we need to make sure we put here? Time of day on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis. So this is our x-axis and this up here is our y-axis. Where did we get this information? Time of day and temperature in this table. This is the time, the top row, and temperature is the bottom row. So we put those there and then they said, what did they say here? They said, draw a line graph. What is this line graph? Well, basically it's the following. After you plot these 12 points, all you have to do is join them up using a ruler. 
So you see the points and you just join up the points using a ruler. And then that's what gives you the line graph. So I'm going to put this here. This is the line graph. So this is another one of the graphs we want to be familiar with. Okay, and then last but not least is the stem and leaf plot. This is the last one I'm going to talk about today here. Guys, I just wanted to tell you this stem and leaf plot. If you have some data here, like 25, 38, etc., this list of data, this is a very nice and easy diagram. Well, what do we do here? Okay, so all we do is this. You see we've got two digit numbers. What we do is we take one of the digits and we put it on the left and we put the other digit on the right of this vertical line. So we draw a vertical line and basically separate each of these numbers like this. The first one, it will become two uh, vertical line, five, three vertical line, eight, one vertical line, seven, etc. But we have to also put them in the right row. So you see, if I, if I draw this uh, vertical line and I call the left side a stem and the right side a leaf, why are we doing that? Because imagine you've got a tree, then it's got a stem, and then at the end it will have leaves. So it kind of reminds us of a of a tree, you know, and this is that's why we call it a stem and leaf diagram. But anyway, let's just come back to this. So what does that mean? It means that any number that starts with a one, like 17, uh, 16, 17, and that's it. These numbers now will go in our first row. So the 17, we already have the one on the left, we'll put just the seven on the right. 16, we already have the one on the left, so we'll put the six on the right. 17, we've got the one on the left, we'll put the seven on the right. So now we are done with the first row. Let's move on to the second row. Any number that starts with a two, we will put in the second row. So that would be 25. You see, 25, we have the two on the left, we have the five on the right. Then 24, let's see, 24, here you put the two on the left, the four on the right. Then 22, you see how we got that two there. Then 20, you see how we kept the zero from the 20, put it here. Then 26 will be the next one, we've got the six right here. And 28 is this number right here, so we put the eight here. So these numbers go in the second row. Third row, we go with our 30s, so 38, Eight goes here, 33, 32, 35, 30, 39, 37, and oh, 31, skipped it, and 33. So notice exactly the second digit from each of these red numbers has gone into this row. And then finally, we've got the 40s. So if I change colors here and select 44 and 42, you will notice that we've got the 4 and the 2 and we put it right in here. Okay, so this is a stem and leaf plot. but Often we want to order it. What does ordering it mean? Well, it means we will basically rewrite these from smallest to largest. So we just change the order to make sure that the smallest number appears first and that the largest number appears next. Just increases over time. So basically the first row will basically be rewritten as 677 so that the six is first. And then we rearrange this row. So we've got zero, two, four, five, six, eight, okay? Um, the next one will be zero, one, two, three, three, um, five, seven, eight, nine. So that's what we've done here. In the last one, we just put the two first and then the four. Okay, one thing you might find a bit strange, this key, this key we need to introduce there ourselves and we just want to give an example. So we use the first one as an example. So you see how we, we've got one and seven. Uh, here, you just draw a, a one and a vertical bar and there's seven next to it. And you say, this means 17. Just to give to someone to understand um, what you've done there. Because, for example, if we had three digits, if we had three digits, maybe, for example, we would have done something differently. We might say um, one, one slash five means 115. Because we might have a problem with three uh, digits there. So that would be another variation of writing down the key. Um, so this is for another example on the key. But basically, this is this is it. We've got uh, different things. All of them are relatively simple, but we've got various and different things happening here. Let me stop the recording here, upload my annotations and give you some time to practice on your own.